Good morning. For a second, I forgot that it was time for me to get up. <laughs> Brother Lewis, I always mess with him. He has a voice like velvet. <laughs> he, he can lead us on. I first want to want to thank uh, the elders just for allowing me to, to to speak today. When Curtis came to me, I, you know, we uh, we came in right at right before Bible study. He uh, he walked up to me, asked me to uh, if I would preach this Sunday. I think I answered him before he finished the, 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 uh, asking me, actually, so it kind of surprised him. So I'm just so happy that, that the elders here, they, they had the confidence in me to, to allow me to come up and speak today. With that being said, today's topic is, is, is something that's, that's dear to me, and um, I really feel it, it, it really hits me hard. I didn't tell my wife what I was going to write about, and that was hard because I can't keep anything from her. I try to, <laughs> but, but, but I just can't. Um, so I'll first like to lead off every, every sermon. I want to lead off with a scripture. If you turn with me to 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. 1 John, verse 4, 7 and 8. I see my mom, she came. She wrote my very first sermon when I was a little kid. It was about, uh, it was about running a race, <laughs> running a race. And I could have been everybody about 12 years old, probably. Nervous everything. First John, chapter four, verse seven and eight, it reads, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone who love is, is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. In the United States today, the divorce rate is almost at about 50%. For every couple being married, that means another couple is, is going through a divorce. And that's a, that's a real problem. Because while one couple is in that honeymoon stage, you know that stage where you're holding hands, you're gazing in each other's eyes, you just can't get enough of them, you just, you just, you know what I'm talking about, Barry. <laughs> Barry still got it. <laughs> that there's another couple who just, just going through a storm, who, who just, just can't stand each other and can't look at each other. And uh, that, that's very alarming. When I think about marriage and love, I, I think about couples like the Carters. They've been married 35 years. 35 years next month. The Francis, another 35 years in December. I think about Phyllis and Curtis, 44 years. I also I think about Brother Hatcher and Sister Hatcher. Now, they've been married. I can't tell you a time where they, they weren't married because I've known them. I can't tell you a time I didn't know them. Um, and I'm 41 years, so I don't know how, how, how long, but I know it's been a long time. Uh, Martha and George. 65 years. That's, that's, a, that's a truly a blessing. And when I look at my marriage, I've been married 16 years. That's, it seems like a young buck, but to me it's a long time. <laughs> but it is a blessing. It's a, it's a blessing. And so, when I think about that, with all these years between each of these couples, you know, there, there has to be something that these couples are, they know, or that, that they're doing, that these other couples just don't understand or can't figure out. And so today, I want to take a deep dive on this topic of love and, and what the Bible teaches us about it. But the first thing that, that we need to do is we need to get a real definition of love. We need to know what it is and what does it look like and, and, just, answer, and just to answer that first question, we need to go over to 1 Corinthians 13, Chapter 4 and 7. It would be 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 and 7. I remember as a kid, I can't tell you, I can't tell you the actual story, but my mother, somebody asked my mom, uh, what's the purpose of life? And uh, I was so young, I can't remember exactly when, but it stuck with me. She uh, I, I looked at her as, as that person asked her, and I, I, I stared at her, at, her, at her lips and everything. I was so young, so little. And uh, she said, love. 
And when she said love, I didn't completely understand it. And uh, the older I get now, I'm starting to understand it better. But let's go ahead and read 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 through 7. It says, Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself, it is not puffed up, it does not behave rudely, it does not seek its own and is not provoked, it thinks no evil, it does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoice in the truth, it bears all things, it believes all things, it hopes all things, and endures all things. Now that's what I call love. You see, love suffers long and is kind. It doesn't lose interest when, when times get rough. It, it doesn't say that, that you suffer in your marriage for, for two months and then you just give up. Does it, say, it doesn't say, what about two years? Does it say two years? No, it doesn't. What about 10 years, Brother Francis? What about 20? You suffer for 20 years. Did you, you go ahead and give up? What does it say? It says long, long suffering. That means however long it takes to suffer, that's how long you need to be, case, be patient. Here's how long it takes. And that's love. Love does not parade itself around. You know, it's, it's not on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or, you know, or whatever you use boasting around just to get likes or comments and shares. You know, it's nothing wrong with, with posting your pictures up and, you know, your anniversaries and whatnot. But if it's centered around the approval of others, something wrong with that. Amen? All right. <laughs> it's okay to say amen. Love is not rude. It is not selfish. It cannot be made, be, be made angry easily. You know, this, uh, this reminds me of a story when I, when, we, when I first got married, uh, Adrian moved down from Minnesota, and uh, we got married, and we immediately got our first home. And we were living in a, in a mobile home over, over in, uh, off of St. Mary's Road. You couldn't tell us nothing. You couldn't tell us nothing, friends. We, we, we were it. <laughs> we got our first place, had a dog, had a cat. You couldn't tell us nothing. No kids yet, <laughs> you know. And um, I remember she had just started working at the waterworks, and I was, I think I was still playing football. And I was, I was about to start teaching. Um, and uh, I came home from, from either practice or work or whatever, and we started arguing. And I remember now, we were like 20, 24, 23, we were, we were hot, <laughs> you know, hot, hot. And uh, we started arguing about the house being, 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 being dirty, <laughs> being, being dirty. So, and we were going at it, too. Called her brother. We were going at it. <laughs> we just, boom. All of a sudden, Adrian just said, she just blurted out, we just, we just, <laughs> we just around here living like pigs. <laughs> and I'm telling you, the moment she did that, it just the whole, the whole argument just, just, it just, it just went away. So I, I can say Adrian won that one. She won that one. <laughs> she won that one. But getting back to, to what I'm saying is, is that. Uh, <laughs> But get back on topic. Love does not remember the, wrong, the wrongs done against it. It let things go. It doesn't say, baby, I forgive you, and then bring it up 10 years later. You know, it, it actually lets it go. Love, never, love is never happy when others do wrong, but it's always happy with the truth. Love never gives up on people. It never stops trusting, and it never loses hope, and it never quits. And that's love. So when you say that you, you, you love someone, that means that you are saying that you will always be kind, you will always be patient, you won't be jealous, you won't brag and boast, you won't be rude, you won't be, be selfish, you won't angry easily, you won't remember the wrong that's done against you. You won't need to, to, to get that revenge when somebody does you wrong, and you definitely won't give up on your marriage. And that's what I call love. It's easy to quit. It's so easy to quit. So stick through the long suffering and just stick through it. 
You know, I remember this ring, I remember uh, about three to four years ago, my wife and I, you know, we were going through a, a, a storm. And I mean, it was, it was real bad. And the one, the one thing that, that got us through this storm was love. Now, when I say love, it's, it's not exactly what some people may be thinking of. And, and to kind of better, under, better explain this, let's go over, you know, the better understanding is, is hardship. We need to go over to the Matthew 6, 33. In Matthew 6, 33, it reads, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Now, during that storm, we well, were right before the storm, we noticed something. We noticed that, that we were focused on the wrong things. You know, it, it, we, we started out, it started out with us missing on a Wednesday night service. You know, here and there, you know, it's okay. We'll, we'll, we won't come this Wednesday. We'll just, you know, it ain't, ain't going to hurt anybody. And then it became a Sunday morning worship. And after, after, you, after, that, after you, you realize that time goes by, you haven't been in church in a whole year. And see, now you, and now you got those marriage problems because the devil didn't seek and found a way to get in there and seek in. And so, what do you think we did? We focused on all of our attention on seeking the kingdom of God first. We started going to church every time that the doors were open. If there was a Bible study, we were there. If there was a Sunday worship, guess what? We were there. If there was a, a fellowship dinner at the church, guess what? <laughs> we were there. Anytime the saints met, you guess right. We were exactly there. When you seek God first, when you seek the kingdom of God, certain things just don't bother you so much. When you seek, when you seek the kingdom of God, him leaving his, his, his beard shavings on the bathroom sink just don't bother you that much. <laughs> I guess that's my thing, huh? <laughs> I'm getting better. It's been 16 years. I'm still, I'm still working on it. When you seek, when you seek you first, that smelly cologne or perfume that, that, that your partner wears, it just, don't, it just don't bother you that much. When you, when you come home, when you seek you first and you come home and that food is sitting on the table that, as, as if you want it, that just don't bother you that much. I see you, brother. <laughs> when you seek you first, when, and when, when he or she has lost her job, it just don't bother you that much. When you seek you first, and you know, he's been playing video games and never watching the kids or spending time with the kids, it just don't bother you that much. It may bother you, but it just don't bother you that much. You know, I can go on and on about, about you know, when you seek you first and, and about the different things that will bother you, but the whole point is that we have to always seek the kingdom of God first and put that in our marriage. Our focus needs to be on getting to the kingdom first instead of having that attention on that person. Because whatever that person is doing, if your attention is on, that, on the kingdom of God, you're not worried about that. Because your attention, your focus is on, on who? On God. You see, we realize that God is love. And in John 4 and 8, it says that he who does not love does not know God, for God is love. I say that again. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. So if God is love, that means that God is patient with us, just as, as we should be patient with our partners. If God is love, that means that God is not puffed up or behaves rudely, just as we shouldn't be with our partners. If God is love, that means that God forgives us of our sins when we repent, just as we should remember the wrong that's done to us. 
God is, is never happy with others when, when others do wrong, but he is always happy with the truth. God never gives up on us. He never stops, not stops trusting. He's never, he never loses hope, and he never quits. God is love. When we put God first in our marriage, it becomes a beautiful, lasting relationship that both partners are, are working towards the qualities of God and in love. Now, I can, I can honestly say that when we first got married, I loved my wife. I can say that, that's, that's, that's fair, that's fair. Um, but I love her, I love her maybe 20 times more now than I did back then, just because I learned the qualities of being patient. Being patient, being kind, not being rude. And it all comes from seeking God first. I hope that I've, I've said something today that, you know, to, to help you better your relationships with, with, with your partner and with God. And remember, you know, we need to seek the kingdom of God and all the things that, 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 that are given to you. If you are not part of, the God, of, of God's kingdom, here are some things that, that you must do to be added. You must first hear the word. In Romans 10, 17, it says, So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Secondly, we must believe. In John 8, 24, it says, Therefore I said to you that you will, that, that you will die in your sins. For if you do not believe that, that I am he, you will die in your sins. Thirdly, we must repent. In Luke 13, 3, it says, I tell you, I tell you no, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Next, you need to confess. In Matthew 10, 32, it says, Therefore, who, whoever confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. The fifth thing that we must, must do is we must be baptized. In Acts 2, 38, Peter said, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And lastly, in Revelation 10 and 2.10, we must remain faithful. It reads, be faithful until death, and I will give you the crown of life. If you're ready, would you please stand while we sing the invitation song?